Hello. I would say happy Monday, except it's it's twenty past four in the afternoon. We've got the fire lit, the log fire lit. I've had to draw the curtains because it's gotten very dark outside. And if it rains any more, I'm going to ask for a mobility canoe. I just got soaked. <laughs> My son said, "Why didn't you take the big scooter?" I went, "No." He said, "Do you mean you'd rather get wet through?" and take that big scooter I said yeah <laughs> that is how desperate it is that I would rather get wet uh, I didn't get that wet actually because I had my cape over me you know cape crusader not Batman um, I did have that and uh, cheers got my cup coffee it's going to be really red hot this actually and it is yeah no, I just thought I'd come on and give you a little chit-chat. I'm still not crocheting. I don't know why I've gone off the whole thing. I've gone off. I've lost the bug, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I'm wearing my bright coloured beads again. Well, different ones. <laughs> I know you all like to see my beads. They're different ones. Nice and bright. They match the pockets and the... No, the pocket and the frill on the bottom of my top. That sounds a bit daft, at the bottom of your top. You know what I mean. Anyway, I just thought I'd give you a chat about um, the craft fair on Saturday. I mean, we did sell quite a bit of stuff, but obviously, you know, you go with the hopes. <laughs> hopes, hopes, hopes of selling more than you do. But having said that, you know, I wasn't disappointed because it was just a little church uh, craft fair. It wasn't like a big super duper craft fair where there's tons and tons of footfall. I mean, we were lucky in the fact that it didn't rain. So, you know, we got as many people as we would have but with a church um, fair you tend to only get the congregation and a few others that come you know if it's a massive craft fair you would get the footfall but you would also pay an awful lot more for your stall so it's kind of like swings and roundabouts isn't it really you know because whatever profit you made you would have to take this mega amount that you paid I mean, I went to one in Blackpool. I didn't, you know, um, didn't exhibit, if you know what I mean. I just went to see what it was like. And the stalls there were £25. And you had to pay for, I think it was the month or whatever up front. Because it was every Saturday, I think, for about a month. But you would have had to pay it up front. So that was like £100 gone. And uh, even though it was really, really busy, I, I honestly, when I was sitting there, I didn't see an awful lot of people buying anything. They were just walking around and then walking around the other side and then out again. And um, I felt sorry for the people who'd paid like the £25 for a stall. Uh, so I just said, oh, no, it's not for me, you know. It would have been difficult for me to get to Blackpool anyway with my bags of stuff and my rails and what have you got. And um, the car, the hotel it was ha it was at, the hotel it was at didn't have its own car park, so that would have been a problem. You would have had to try to park somewhere near and carry your bags in. Um, so I did, I gave that one a miss. So this is the problem. We've either got the great big massive craft fairs that would attract thousands of people, but you would have to pay a lot of money for your stall. So you've got to weigh it up, you know, just how much would you sell in order to get your stall money back again, you know. So either way, I mean the church um, the church fair I went to on Saturday, the, the stall fair was, was not expensive at all. So, you know, hey ho, <laughs> I made some money so I'm happy about that. Yeah. As you know, I have opened up the Etsy shop again. I didn't want to, but uh, I need... I need the space in my shed. I am thinking of doing another cull, you know, as far as my um, stash is concerned. Um, I will go through and put some more things on Etsy, but I will tell you all if I'm going to do that, just in case you're in the UK and you want to buy anything. Um, because I normally put it on at less than what I've paid for it, you know. And um, I mean, I put it on as bids. Maybe I should put it on at a price but then would I sell it if I put it on at a price who knows <laughs> I don't 
yeah anyway that's just a thought that i might do but uh, to be quite honest it's been that dreadful even though the shed is only a few well, a few yards away from where the main house is the grass is wet through and sodden and uh, you know i mean i did mentioned to my son I would like some stepping stones you know so at least I could step on stepping stones wouldn't be as wet as wet grass you know you have to put some outdoor shoes on you have to roll your trouser legs up because if the grass is a bit longer than that you get the bottoms of your trousers wet you know and uh, it doesn't encourage me to go in there at the moment and quite frankly it's going dark um, unless I get up early and go when it's daylight and the sun <laughs> the sun See how hopeful I am, the sun is shining. It was the other day actually, and it was first thing this morning I think, and I got up. It was that like yesterday. That's the beauty of being retired, you know, your days roll into one. I think it was yesterday. Well, wouldn't be me if I didn't get a message on the phone, would it? Anyway, as I say, I've just been up to get me, me diabetes check. Just been regular naughty girl one you know <laughs> it's always a naughty girl one with me anyway she's given me some different tablets so we'll see how we go hey ho yeah it's not going to worry me particularly as i said before i'm not health obsessed <laughs> i just take whatever life chucks at me because it may be a short life but it could be a happy one <laughs> Um, yeah, so what else have I got? Oh, the dogs have just gone out. They've gone only to get a booster shot. Trixie was one yesterday and we didn't have a party and she, we didn't make her wear a party hat or anything like that. So she's blissfully unaware that she was one yesterday. Um, Rosie's gone for a booster shot, but the both of the dogs have gone because my son wanted to take Trixie when she wasn't having anything done, you know, so that she doesn't see the vets as... A place where somebody jabs her or sticks things in her or you know worse still you know <laughs> yeah you know you know how they take a dog's temperature you know that's worse still isn't it yeah my buster was the placidest of dogs until we took him to the vet <laughs> we literally had to buzz him he just took great exception to the vet taking his temperature, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I will say. He might be eating. Um, so he wasn't keen on this. And you know, he was the most soft-tempered dog. He used to bark. Oh yeah, he used to bark. He hated the postman. He used to bark, bark, bark when the postman came. And of course, I used to get a lot of parcels back in the day, didn't I? Because I was always ordering wool, you know. And as soon as the van pulled up, you know, I think it used to be DPD or somebody. Or one of the firms that's now gone out of business. TNT or something, I think, that used to come and deliver Millwall. And even if they parked on the opposite side of the road, he you. Oh, mum, you're getting a parcel. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. I miss a gruesome twosome, you know, the little, little and large. <laughs> My big dog and little Gigi. They used to keep me entertained. They used to pass the day on because they were such fun. And they were always together. And I was just saying to William, when we had, we had the two Rottweilers, we had my dog Buster, the Boxer Cross, and I used to look after little Gigi. And sometimes next door's two would come in. I'd have a Cocker Spaniel called Buddy. And I'd have a little terrier of some description. She was also called Poppy. She was Poppy number two. So sometimes I'd have a house full of dogs. And you know, there wasn't one bit of aggression in the lot of them. You know, um, they used to play together. And I used to think it was quite amazing, really. You know, there was like, well, there was like two big, well, three big dogs. Because Buster was classed as big dog. Three big dogs. One medium sized one and two little ones and they all used to get on famously, absolutely famously, you know. And when I see these videos on, on YouTube like and, and Facebook with Asher House and 
you know, that big guy, little dogs and all that. And he has all these 20, 30 dogs. And people say, how come they don't fight? But they kind of form a little pack in a nice way. I don't mean a pack in an aggressive way. They kind of form a little pack, a little buddy pack, yeah. And that's what uh, they do do. I mean, right from the minute that uh, Trixie came in, well, right from the minute that Rosie came in the house, uh, Poppy had no problems with her whatsoever. Just accepted her, yeah. And then, when, of course, we lost Poppy. And then we decided to get Trixie. When she came in the house, there's never been any problems at all. The only time um, Rosie will have a little snip at her is Trixie will go and pinch a treat, yeah, if she gets half a chance. Trixie is a snaffle down kind of dog, you know, it doesn't touch the side, it's like, and it's gone. Whereas Rosie chew, 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 and occasionally she'll drop a little piece of a treat that she's chewing. And, you know, it doesn't touch the floor before Trixie's in there. And that's when, that's the only time I've ever known Rosie sort of, you know, <laughs> Trixie. I mean, they play fight, don't get me wrong, they play fight all the time, they play fight. You know, anybody looking at them would think they're fighting, but they're not, they're just playing. They don't harm each other, unless it's by accident, of course. Trixie's got a sore spot on her cheek at the moment, but it's not from um, our dog. It was when she went up to Scotland, apparently she got a bit too close to a cat and the cat scratched her on her face. So she's having all kinds of, you know, antiseptic creams and all that stuff on her face. It's healing up. But the problem was after the cat scratch, she kept scratching it. So she's made it worse. So. So she spent her first birthday being so old. Trixie, don't scratch. Trixie, don't. Because <laughs> she's only making it worse. But you can't reason with a dog. They do what they want, don't they? Anyway, today, tomorrow is my daughter-in-law's birthday. I might have been going singing, but I decided that I would stay in and look after the dogs and let her go. Because she goes to see her family on a Tuesday. So I thought maybe they want to. Um, you know, maybe go to a cafe. She won't drink because she's driving. But they might want to go to a cafe, you know, or whatever, to celebrate her birthday. And, of course, she can't take the... I mean, here, we're very dog-friendly at Fleetwood. You can take your dogs more or less any place here. But other uh, towns and that, they're not so um, dog-friendly. You can't take... Except for guide dogs and service dogs. You can't take them in a lot of places. Whereas here, you know, nobody bothers if you take them in any shops. I mean, we don't actually take our dogs in the shops because, you know, Rosie can tend to be a bit when a stranger gets a bit near to her. Uh, she's not aggressive, don't get me wrong, she doesn't bite, but she just likes to show her teeth, you know, which frightens a lot of people. So we tend to leave her, you know, keep her outside of a shop. But they're very friendly around here with dogs, very, very friendly. Nearly everybody's got a couple of dogs, you know. And even at the craft fair, there was a couple of dogs wandering around, you know. In fact, I was talking to a little white Westie. Lovely little soul, I forgot their name. Terrible with names, isn't it? Awful when you get older. You know, like names go in one ear and <laughs> how are they all with me? I'm terrible. You know, somebody asked me on Saturday Live what was Kelly's surname because they wanted to look up her videos. And for the life of me, I could not remember. Anyway, about half an hour later it came to me, but I think the lady who'd asked me had disappeared off the live by this time. <laughs> so I did, she did put, actually she did put a comment, so I did manage to give her the link to Kelly's video, yeah. I think she's took her others down, you know, the crafting ones, because she's not doing them at the moment. But she does still have another life, like, uh, you know, like family life one, she's still got one of those. My niece has been trying to come to get to see me, you know, as you know, it's my birthday on Friday. So I'm saying to her, well, you can't come this next week because I'm looking after the dogs. And, you know, uh, we couldn't go out and leave them. She wants to take me out, like, for a, a lunch, you know. So I won't go out and leave them unless I have to. Not for, I'll leave them for an hour, but I won't leave them for long. And uh, my, son, my son's going uh, away this weekend. He's taking my daughter-in-law away for the weekend because it's her birthday so and then the weekend after I've got another craft fair well, 
December the 3rd. I've got another crapper. Again, it's a church one. And I'm going to have to do a bit of jiggery pokery because the one I went to, the lady's used to me and she gives me a table and she gives me two rails. Well, the one that we're going to will only be a table. So I don't know what I'm going to do actually because I don't feel like dismantling the rail, you know, the falling down rail out of my shed, you know, the one that was great hilarity because it kept falling to bits. Because it's stuck up now with sticky tape that would hold an elephant to the ceiling, it's stuck up with that. So I don't feel like undoing it, you know. I did look on one of those marketplace things that we have around here to see if anybody was offloading one for free, you know. See if I could have got another one and then when I don't need it I can pass it back on free. But nobody had one. Um, it's always one of those things people go, oh I had one, oh I've got one you could have borrowed, you know. <laughs> and they always tell you like too late, don't they? So I'm thinking about it because it's very difficult to display shawls and hats and scarves if you don't have coat hangers and a rail, you know. Because the tables are not that big in a craft show. And, um, you know, so like we're still selling the Christmas ornaments that my friends made. She did very well, mind you, but I'm surprised she didn't sell them all because she was selling them all really, really cheaply. So I'm really surprised that they didn't get sold. But so she'll be taking what she didn't sell. She'll be taking those on December the 3rd. So if you're in the Fleetwood area, St Nicholas's, wherever that may be, can't tell you, don't know. <laughs> I'll have to look it up myself, otherwise I could be doing a very great circular. My son will be saying, where is it? And I'll be saying, I don't know, I don't know. I'm sure I'll find out before then. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm not going to make anything else except what I did get asked for, which we didn't have, were kiddies' headbands. We sold quite a few of the headbands that we were selling. Um, but I didn't have any kiddies' ones, so that's one thing that I will do. And then a friend of mine who's in the Harmony and Health, you know, we're singing that gorgeous bookie shade of yellow, yeah. She asked me would I make her a yellow headband and yellow fingerless mittens for her Harmony and Health group. So I think I've still got some of that yellow left, you know, when I made the big blanket that I was going to use for Harmony and Health when it was chilly. Uh, I haven't been back because we're still in the same cold hall. Although my, dear, my friend Sheila did say that it was actually a bit warmer the last time she went, they had put the heating on. But they are talking about um, transferring to a different place because they're charging £100. And we're only in there two hours and I think that's a bit steep. You know, considering that we're all, I'm not being rude, but we're all OAPs, we're all senior citizens, whatever you want to call us, you know. So we need to be kept warm. I mean, we do pay, you know, a little bit of money to, you know, towards the cost of it all, yeah. Um, but it's still a lot of money, £100 for two hours, you know. I'm sure they could find something a bit more amenable and a bit less money and a bit warmer, <laughs> you know. I don't mind in the summer because we sing outdoors in the summer and it can be gorgeous. It can be. <laughs> can be very windy, but it can be very gorgeous. <laughs> It's so funny, everybody says the same question, even the taxi driver the other day. Why did you move to Fleetwood? <laughs> and he was born and bred in Fleetwood. And I said, do you know, I really don't know. <laughs> I'm sure we could have picked a warmer place. It's lovely when the sun shines. It is gorgeous when the sun shines, but there's so much wind that comes with the sea. And we're so close to the sea. We're only about five houses down. That way is the sea. We're about five houses down. Yeah. Oh, next door but one. They've put some of the Christmas lights up. They've got big white icicles and blue lights going up on the apex of the house. Yeah. If I think on when I go out, when it's dark one, if it's not raining, I'll take a still photograph and I'll put it on Instagram and Facebook. It looks so pretty. You know. I think they're one of the first ones. Although somebody's got lights on one of the other streets but nobody on the man they were a bit miserable last year they didn't do much last year to be quite honest uh, I mean where I used to live before they used to really go to town but the thing was you see where I lived before there was a lot of small children 
and I think you do get more enthused about putting lights up and decorating and that when you get kiddies don't you because they get so excited don't they um, I mean we will put the tree up well <laughs> if my daughter-in-law reaches it down from upstairs my son's a bit barham but you know but uh, we will put the tree up I did buy one if you remember I can't remember if it was white silver white I know I got a tall slim one because I don't have room for a massive big tree. So we had a tree in here, we had a tree in the conservatory and my daughter-in-law had a, a tree up in their lounge, yeah. Because when the kiddies come, you know, her grandchildren, my great-grandchildren come, they expect, don't they, to see a tree, you know. They expect to see trimmings, they expect to see whatever. And I bought one of those like wreathy things that goes over the, the mantle. Oh, my fire's not doing very well. It's still going with fire, but he's not exactly blazing, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I've got a few. My friend had made some lovely wreaths, you know, big knitted crochet, sorry, I beg your pardon, crochet wreaths with like little animals and, not animals, elves in the middle of them. They were very pretty. I'm really surprised she didn't sell those. Really, really surprised. But if we put one on our front door, we'd have to put it on the inside because with no porch. I mean, when I was at my other house, I had a porch. So I could put something on the inner door, you know, a wreath on the inner door. And uh, I used to put one on the inside of my porch door, but facing out, yeah. But of course, we don't, we're, we're almost to the elements here, so anything we put outside would just get lashed with rain. <laughs> so I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> And I think that's all I've got to tell you, except I've really gone off my crochet. I'm trying to drum up enthusiasm to do this headband. But I won't see her until possibly Thursday. So I've still got time to make it. I would have been seeing her tomorrow if I'd have gone singing tomorrow. But as I say, I'm looking after the dogs. Because it's my daughter-in-law's birthday, so, you know, hey-ho. It's her day, isn't it, you know? <laughs> So we'll see what happens. I don't think much will happen on Friday on my birthday because my son's working. He'd asked to do 6-2 so we would be home. So we could all go out for afternoon tea or, you know, evening meal or whatever you want to call it. But they've put him on a 10-7 or something, so he's a bit cross about that. He's going to try it. He's going to work tomorrow. He's going to try and change it. So, hmm, it'd be nice to go out for a meal, wouldn't it? Do something nice for my birthday, you know. Another year older and deeper in debt. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> That's one good thing about living with the family is you can you combine all the bills, you combine everything. So the one thing we are not is we are not in debt. <laughs> we don't have a lot of money, but we're not in debt. So... Anyway, I'm going to go now and I'm hoping you're having a happy Monday and it's not raining where you are, yeah? So I'll go upload this video now before the doggos come back from the vets and all hell lets loose, you. Yeah? Because <laughs> they get so excited, it's like they've not seen me for years when they come flying in, it's like, whoa, grandma, you know? <laughs> it is nice though to be appreciated if it's only by the dogs. <laughs> So I shall see you very soon. I don't know whether I'll do a video tomorrow because I've no crochet to show you. I'll try and make myself at least do the headband and the fingerless mittens. Then I might have something to show you tomorrow. So goodbye for now. I hope you're having a lovely day. Bye now.